Hey guys, welcome to the video. It's Simon the Watch Guy. Today it's going to be a talk. It's going to be a video blog. I've got a video blog for you guys. We're not going to make this 20 minutes. We're going to try and make this as quick as we can. This is the second time I've recorded this because I don't think the first time I really got to the point quick enough. So here goes. Today I worn the Seiko 5. The past few days I've been wearing the M5610. I've decided that the Orient is probably going to leave the collection very soon. And I really hate to do this, believe me, I really do, but I think the tuner, there's a fairly, fairly big chance that might leave the collection. Although I know I've got, I'm going to get buyer's remorse, I really don't want to part with this watch. I do love it, I really do love it. In fact, I don't know if I can bring myself to get rid of this one. But... Yeah, um, I've got one of the cheap or affordable Casio here, the A1200. Again, it's so cheap to buy brand new, it's, there's no point selling it, so I'm going to keep that. Um, you know, not because, not for any reason, I don't love the watch as such, but there's no point selling it. I would just get no money for this one, really. Uh, so, yeah, the... Bulova uh, Curve Chronograph, that's staying in the collection purely and simply because that was a reward. I treated myself to this one because I had achieved something and it's a memento of that achievement. But it got me looking at people who develop addictions because I've told you in previous videos this watch collecting thing is an addiction. Let's not fool ourselves anymore. So a few behavioural traits of people who are addicted or have a high risk of developing an addiction, they tend to be apathetic or apathetic, which is essentially you're kind of numb to the feeling of certain things. So if I wear this 5610 on a Monday and love it, I think it's the best watch ever, and everyone should own a Casio. On a Tuesday, I might think, yeah, I'm not really feeling it too much at all. I'm going to use my uh, Seiko 5 today. That might be, if, if, if that's how your behaviour continues, and, you know, you swap your watches. I currently switch watches every day, sometimes two a day, or even three on a really bad day. That might be a, a trait. If you've got obsessive and compulsive uh, behavioural traits. So, for example, I constantly, guys, when I'm not recording YouTube videos, I'm constantly looking for watches. What else is out there? The other day I was looking at a Bulova Marine Star. Are they called Marine Stars? I can't remember. I think they're called a Marine Star. I was looking at the Bulova Diver range and wow, wow, I wish I'd discovered them earlier, but I kind of don't wish I'd discovered them earlier because I would have bought them and I'm on a watch hiatus. I, I'm trying to avoid buying them, as you know, from following the channel. So if you've got uh, other uh, people who've developed addictions in the family, maybe you've got, you know, you've actually experienced a mental health disorder of any sort, you are at risk of becoming a, you know, a collector of sorts. So the question is, do we have an addictive personality? Uh, I would probably argue yes, we probably do. It's not a psychiatric diagnosis, apparently, according to a guy called Michael Weaver. He's a medical director for the Center of Neurobehavioral Research on Addiction at the University of Texas over in uh, the US. So I'm going to show you guys something. You may not know this, but I'm going to show you anyway. So, okay, we've got a phone here. This is my phone. So if I was to drag down and it refreshes, drag down, it refreshes, that is designed to be addictive, okay? Because that dragging down, that action, it resembles a slot machine at a casino where you're pulling the lever down. It's changing the data. It's changing the information that you see. It's visually stimulating, it's giving you a dopamine hit. And it's a little bit like how we see the watches. Uh, we tend to get a dopamine hit off them. I mean, if I've not worn my tuner for a month, 
I'm desperate to get that back on my wrist to make me feel happy, make me feel satisfied once again. So there's arguments to say, is it something in our genes? You know, if we have one addiction, we're more likely to have another addiction on top. But it's that dopamine hit, it's that chemical in the brain that makes us feel pleasure and happiness, okay? So if you're an addictive person, you love the excitement. Sometimes the excitement of looking for a watch online is more exciting than actually receiving it and opening it. Uh, for me personally, I am probably falling into that category, but when I receive a watch, the first thing I do is put the camera up here, hit record and start recording it for you guys. So another addictive trait might be your impulse. If you just impulse, if you just buy things without thinking about them too much, guys, you may, you may fall into this category too. If you've got the inability to quit, now this is probably the main one, you're probably on the right track to thinking to yourself, well, maybe there's an issue. I personally recognised myself there was an issue because I had about 15, 16 watches. People were commenting, saying, you know, really, do you need this many? And before they even commented, it had crossed my mind that, you know, this is a little bit crazy, a little bit stupid because I don't have 16 wrists. I've got two, but I only wear the watch on one wrist. So it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a bit stupid. And then I kind of added up all the watches. And like I say, I've sold some, you've seen them on the channel. I've actually sold, bought and sold watches that I haven't even reviewed on the channel. I seriously, I had a G-Shock uh, recently. It was the, oh gosh, what model was it? It was the 7900 GA, I think it was. It was, uh, the reason I bought it was because I had this idea I was going to go to Russia, uh, and I really was, I was going to go to Russia on this like trip, and I've got a Russian friend, you see, so we were going to go to uh, go to Russia, and with the minus temperatures, this, this watch was uh, capable of going to like minus 20, I think it was, and I had this, but again, I sold the watch and I didn't review it for the channel, so I do apologise about that one. Um, anyway. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is my watch addiction, it's definitely coming to an end. Not because I want it to every single day, guys. Every day I'm looking at watches, I'm keeping up to date with what's coming out, Basil World, all of those things. But at the same time, I realise the addiction has to stop. Not just because I'm not sponsored, guys. These, these videos, as you can tell, they're not overly professional anymore. I don't really. I just record them. I buy the watches myself, I review them myself, I talk about them, you know, uh, no one is funding me, I've got no Patreon, I don't have, I don't ask you guys for a penny, uh, I don't have any sponsors, and that way I don't really have anyone telling me what to do or what to say, so I can say, oh, the Belova's absolute rubbish, I hate it, I don't, I think it's a great watch, but I, I could say that and, you know, I would never, I would never say that about a watch. I would never say I hate a watch. But uh, sorry, Belova, I do apologise. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm trying to say is I have full control over the channel. So with that being said, the main question I, I appreciate we're coming up to uh, soon to be ten minutes into the video. So the main question of today, apart from whether you have a addictive personality, is whether you think that leaving this addiction is going to lead to another addiction. That's the million dollar question, guys, because if we drop this collection, if we drop this addiction, sorry, where do we go from here? What happens next? Because for me, this has become a financial thing, okay? So I, this is probably too much information for YouTube, but essentially I've got bills to pay and all my money has been going on watches and it's not, not good it's not cool anymore guys so yeah answer that question in the comment section below as always i will read every comment get back to everyone again i'll get i'll get a lot of personal private messages so feel free to send them through let me know your thoughts do you think your addictive personality is going to lead somewhere else when you quit the watch collecting hobby or are you in control do you feel in control are you in control or are you just kidding yourself 
pretending you're in control. Either way, let me know, guys, and thank you for watching the video. Take care. Bye.